Hello folks and welcome. Linux Mint 21.2 Mate Desktop. You know, a lot of folks will not click on videos unless they are working with their own desktops uh, to see other information in most cases. So um, the information I'm presenting today is not new, um, but it is for the Mate Desktop. And uh, you'll also see some slight differences on some tools with the other Mint desktops. So um, Mate uses Kaja for a file manager. I'm going to be talking about the tools that are built right into your file manager for Mate Desktop and the backup tool. And I'm going to show you the differences and why you probably should use your file manager instead of the backup tool because you'll, you'll see what I'm talking about. I'm going to walk you through the whole process. So this is made for new users or any user for that matter. Filming in 1920 by 1080. You are watching this on Linux for Seniors. This is just a watermark. You should see this icon kind of floating above the time date if you'd like to subscribe. 280 videos and growing. And it's especially useful if you can't watch this in one setting. That way you can start watching it today, stop, come back tomorrow where you left off, or the next day or the following day at your leisure. Okay? File manager time. So Kaja is the file manager for the Mate desktop for Mint. Uh, if you're running a Cinnamon desktop, that would be Nemo. And if you are running an XFCE for Mint, uh, that would be Thunar. So this is Kaja file manager, 126.0. Under default conditions, the built-in application program that is called Backup will back these uh, things up in your documents folder under a folder called Backups. If the folder is not there, it creates it. There's currently nothing in there, okay? So I have another folder that I created myself and made a backup using the tools just built right into the file manager, which in my point of view are far superior than that application, okay? And uh, you can see that uh, this is in tar format, tape archive. So I'm gonna close this and let's talk a little bit about backups. We can certainly go to the software manager and install all kinds of software. You, you can also install um, GRSync, which is uh, graphical rsync. You can also use regular rsync with like script files. I've shown plenty of videos on that also. Um, but let's talk about the general backup programs that are already in your Mate desktop. The first one is found on all of the Linux Mint desktops, which is TimeShift. But that's a system restore utility. It's technically not a backup tool. I'm just going to log in here for a second. Because a lot of people have the misconception that uh, this time shift is backing up their personal files. It is not by default. Let me click settings and let you see that because I kept the defaults. Okay. So it normally uses rsync. Again, I have videos also on rsync and grsync, but. Uh, it's doing five. If I log in every day, it does five of these things. But under users, it excludes my home folder. My user for today is Mint 2.12, 21.2. Mint 2.12 is our user. So that's what I'm referring to. And so Mint put in a tool here called Backup. Okay, the Backup tool, I'm just going to say it flat out, is not as versatile as your file manager. Your file manager is far superior to this tool. First of all, this tool does not have any compression. Your file manager does. This will be using tar, but it, your file manager also has compressed tar. But I'm going to walk you through this nonetheless and I'll let you see the differences. Okay, so I'm just going to focus in on this area here. Some of you folks may have seen some of my older videos. It will be very similar in this video for this process. We have restore and backup. Let's start with a backup because we have no files to restore. Please select an area you want to backup. The default is backups. You can choose other locations, including other drives, whether they're internal or external. So I'm going to click forward. Now you need to answer some questions. Please add files or directories, in other words, folders, to the list below to exclude them, not include, exclude. So by default, your documents backups are excluded and your locally logged in user. If you want to exclude, 
some of the other folders like maybe icons I'll do that or exclude videos I'll do that all this is taking time to do you can do this much more efficiently in your file manager I'll show you all that in a minute but I'm going to walk you through this whole process these are removable this one is not you can't remove that you must have this here okay there's no choice there's no choice either for what type of backups this is going to do forward the next item is a little confusing to some folks so I'll pop it up here for a second hidden files and hidden folders located at the root of your home directory are not included by defaults and a lot of people read into that going what exactly does that mean because they don't know a lot of things about their file manager especially if they're fairly new so this is our user for today mint 212 it's just a made-up name okay like as in 21.2 um, if I hit control H it shows a whole bunch of stuff and I'll resize these on the fly okay anything that starts with a dot or a period is a hidden something I'll make this a little bit larger okay so I'll pick on this folder for a second maybe you have uh, subscribed already and thank you and you've seen some of my videos on how to install like mouse cursors well they're not installed in here today but that's normally where I would teach you to how to install them is right here this one is coming from the USR share folder USR share icons folder to be exact that's where the system wide mouse pointers and cursors are installed let's move along so that's a hidden folder dot icons or period icons the dot bash underscore history is the born again shell history for terminal if you ever wondered where their file is located whether you punched in a bad command or a good command they're recorded here and you can see I have data in there so control H just displays hidden stuff all right so I'm gonna close that so that's all that means do you want the hidden stuff included yes or no if you do then start clicking and you can see them they all have a period in front of them and some of them do not including files all right so I have to answer a bunch of questions and then at the very end I say no and hit apply so it will be backing up a file in the main home folder in your username or home folder by your name documents backups today's date and time with a dash backup dot tar tape archive that's the format it's not compressed it's regular tar tape archive okay now let's open that file sitting right here 838 megabytes does your file manager can your file manager do it just as quick absolutely it's the same speed tar is tar so your file manager has all the tools to do this with and more now if I open this I can tell by looking at it that this was done with a backup program because of that file right there and let me open it for you I'll just let you see it it's no mystery but it has a period in front of it meta.mint very small file but more importantly this is normally called a tar ball I call it a tar box that's my nickname for it everything's in the box that was backed up in your system including the backup of my backup okay but none of the hidden folders were selected okay and whether you use this one or one I'm about to show you it doesn't matter you can extract one or more items if you want or extract the whole thing no, most people don't so these are great for backups and you can see how fast that was now let's talk about your file manager without any tools whatsoever so this is Kaja again if you uh, are also using cinnamon or the XFCE again there's slight differences in here the selection part is can be done with uh, some shortcuts okay do you see that's control a well that would be select all you can also hold down the control key and deselect things in a hurry whatever you want if you're only interested in two folders you can do, certainly do it that way or even a single folder you can also instead of using control a you can also click and hold down the control key and manually select 
That's how versatile this is. If you want to do the hidden thing, then it's control H and then you can still do this manually. Selecting hidden files and folders. Okay, control H. Let's just stick with the visible stuff. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make a backup of everything that you see on the screen. So it's going to be huge because it's going to be including this backup also. This 838 megabytes. I'm just going to show you how quickly this is done. Control A. And now you can right click on any one of these things. And you're looking for the compression box. And in here is lots of tools. I'm going to first do this in a hurry. And I'll just call this backup with today's date. Today is the 26th. I do recommend putting dates on these things. Tar is not compressed. And it is done. That was 1.7 gigabytes that it made a tar ball or a tar box. Everything is in there. So this tool works just as fast as your backup program, except it's more versatile. It doesn't have that extra file there, but we don't really care about that. I'm going to toss that in here because this is a manually created backup folder. So I have one from the 12th and the 26th. That's why I recommend actually throwing dates on these things. So you know how old these are just by staring at them. So everything is still in the tar box or tar ball. And if I wanted something out of it, I just pull it out and I'm done. If I just wanted one item. You can also toss these on USB drives. I have one sitting here. And if this is on a USB hard drive or USB stick, you can also possibly think about maybe sharing your pictures with another computer, depending on how that's formatted. But let's just stick with backups for right now. So if I wanted to do just two things, or maybe three, I could do it that way and right click and compress using tar only. I'll call that one test one. It should be fairly quick. 1.1 gigabytes, one, two, three folders. I didn't select anything else. If I were to do compress with the uh, tar.7z, bz2, gz, lzma, or LZ, LZMA, LZO, or XZ. By the way, this is a very common format for mouse pointers. Also on some of those websites like xfcelook.org or gnome-look.org, which you can also find on my YouTube site in the About section. That's a compressed version of Tape Archive. You didn't have that with your backup program. Your standard built-in backup program didn't offer you any of this stuff. It offered you that only. So if you do need compression, you can use that. This takes longer though when you do this. So we're going to just stick with tar. A lot of folks own big thumb drives, hard drives, internal or external. A lot of people don't care about backups. Or some people care about backups but not compression. Some people want to use a different tool. Lucky Backup uses rsync for instance. Or you can use grsync, which is rsync, graphical rsync. Or you can just use rsync with script files if you're trying to sync it up to a, another device, for instance. But tar backups can be done rather easily using the tools you have right in your Kaja file manager. So I'm um, clicking on one item. I will show you all the selections that are in this box because this is a long list. Standard compression, starting with 7Z, it's a modernized uh, compression. Uh, we'll also give you some options down here, like passwords, for instance. You also have at the bottom of the list down here is zip. And also standard tar, which is not compressed, and then different versions of tar that is compressed in all of these different formats. So yes, your file manager has a lot more tools at your disposal than that little backup program. So I'll toss that in here for a second. Okay, just giving you different derivatives. And again, it doesn't matter which one. This one, I only did three. So you can technically take that and throw it on your stick or USB drive also for file sharing, providing that stick or drive is formatted with something common 
that you can open up on the other computers. Pictures are pictures though. When you're sharing JPEGs, they're J JPEGs. Joint photographic group are very common. Okay, as an example. Make that bigger if you like. It's just a butterfly. Okay, something to think about folks. The tools that are built right into your file manager are a little bit more powerful than this program right here. But if you feel more comfortable using that, you certainly can. Now this tool also comes over the restore and you need to select the spot you need to do the restore and the default is normally your documents backups and then you do the open and then you need to answer a bunch of questions as you move forward when you're trying to do restores versus if you're using your file manager you are your control you're in full control of this yourself choose that big one for instance if I had this backup on a stick or drive and I lost my hard drive and I'm trying to restore my files after I installed the operating system because that is the easiest thing you can do. Restoring your personal files is a different animal. But now that you have a tar file somewhere other than the drive that just died, you can restore all of these by doing an extraction. Or you can do them independently. There may be some documents you don't want on the new computer to do a little bit of house cleaning. But more importantly, you have everything nice, neatly in a box called a TAR, Tape Archive. Hopefully you found this video informative. Thank you for watching.